I am going to talk about introduction to server side Swift and uh, Kitura and Swifter frameworks. So now we have already learned how to handle REST API connection requests. Now we will see how we can do the WebSocket connections. We have a class WebSocket in Kitura. That is the main class for Kitura WebSocket API. All the APIs related to Kitura WebSocket is in that class. And it is used to register, unregister an object which is implementing the WebSocket service protocol methods. And then that service can be used with the WebSocket class to register and unregister. And then all the incoming WebSocket connections, this, the service that you have implemented will return in, in the way that it should return. So for example, so now we will see how it is going to do it. So we have two class functions as I discussed, register and unregister. Register function will take a service and a path. This service is the service that we need to create, which is going to implement this protocol, WebSocket service. So I'll tell you what are the methods that we need to implement for this uh, WebSocket service. But right now we are seeing that this, there is register function and there is unregister function. In register function, you need to pass service as well as the path. But in an unregister function, you just need to pass only the path because it already knows that which service is registered on this path. So it will unregister that service. So you just need to pass the path and it will unregister any service registered to that path. So there is two important functions, register and unregister. It's like we have the router object in case of REST API, REST API uh, connections. Here we have a WebSocket class functions, register and unregister. Now, as I said, like we have to implement a service which will which will implement WebSocket service protocol. So there are four functions that you can implement. One is connected, second is disconnected, third one is received message in a string format, and the fourth one is received message in a data format. So when we create a class, service class, which is implementing these functions, we can actually implement these functions and write whatever you want to serve or do whenever there is a connection, whenever there is a disconnection, whenever we receive any packet from that connection on our server and whenever we receive our message in some other format on our server. So it's pretty simple that these functions as their name suggests, they will be called on connection, disconnection, receiving data in the string format or in the binary format. So you need to implement these four functions. Now, again, I will just show you how you can use it in the code. So again, in the same code, you need to import Kitura WebSocket. Have and have a support of WebSocket connections. Now, there is a class WebSocket, as I mentioned, you need to register your service. I will, I will talk about this chat service, which I created. It's a very basic service. And I have mentioned the path as slash chat. So, I am registering my service on this path. Any client try to make a WebSocket connection on this path will be served as whatever is mentioned in the chat service. That's pretty much it. You just, you just register it. I haven't unregistered it, but I should have in the deinitializer. I have already wrote this line, kitura.stop, which I mentioned that we need to stop whenever we, we are deinitializing the class so that our server is not in running state when we don't even want it to be. Now let's get back to the chat service. So I created this chat service, which is implemented the WebSocket service protocols. We have connections array and there's a connection timeout of 60 seconds. What I'm doing is whenever there is a new connection, I will use the ID of that connection and I will insert that in this array of dictionaries connections with the key as the ID. So connections, is a dictionary with key as connection ID and the value will be the connection itself. So whenever there is a connection, I will, now it, it might possible that there is with the same ID, there is the connection that drops that again comes back. So I will again assign with as the same key that value. In the disconnected function, it's pretty obvious that I will remove that value for that key because it's disconnected. So I will remove that key itself because I know the connection ID. Receive message data. 
if the data is not in correct format i was expecting the data format if it is not there then i will close the connection with the error message that chat server can only accept text messages and i will remove this connection from my connections dictionary the last uh, function which is received message in a string format this will again be used now i have connection id and a connection i will check if this if the if the connection id is matching from id basically the message that coming on this connection so the connection id should match the from id of this message if it is not matching then i will send this message again back on that connection so this is like just an example how you can actually implement this this service so it's it's your wish how, however you this is this is just a basic but you can actually create your whole chat service with these four functions how you want to implement it but it is needed because we will register this service on this path so that was all about web sockets using kitura i can't say that that was full introduction like it was a very brief introduction of the kitura framework because there are a lot of things in kitura framework uh it's a very heavy and big framework and there is another very famous server side swift web framework which is vapor vapor is totally open source framework but these both frameworks kitura and vapor they both are very heavy and we should use them if you are interested in making and building a fully fledged server with a lot of functionalities if you don't want to if you are not interested in doing that if you need to make server with very minimal functionalities then i i would recommend that we can use a swifter framework which is my next topic that we are going to discuss swifter is a library like you can find it on github http swift swifter it's a very tiny http server en engine written in swift this framework obviously is not very popular it is not being used also very widely because it's a very small and it is it can only be used for small purposes and that's why i'm talking about it because sometimes we need very basic server support so we can use this lightweight uh framework and it can be included in our project using carthage or coca pods or even swift package manager so let's go into that and again we have two types of connections as i has discussed earlier rest api connections or websocket connection now i'm going to talk about how we are going to give that support using swifter library so first rest api connections in this like we used to have a router object in kitura framework we have http server object in swifter framework http server is a class we need to create an object of this class it provides us the ex external interface for routing request to the appropriate code to handle them if you remember i said the same thing for the router object i am saying the same thing for this http server object in Kit in swifter framework because there is a router object of class http router which is internally declared and created in the http server class but we don't have to interact with the router itself we can just provide we can just give the functionalities like the closures the the functions that needs to be called whenever there is a get request or post re post request we can give that directly to this http server and it will be registered to the router object of class http router now this http server class gives us the subscript notation so we can use that subscript notation and i'm going to talk about that now as i said this server is an object of http server class and this subscript notation i am passing the request path and to this i am setting up my closure which needs to be called whenever there will be a get request or post request for this request path now this is the key difference if you remember in kitura framework we have get and post function and similarly other functions whereas in swifter framework you can have only one closure for a path and whatever request the get request or the post request on both the request this closure will be implemented obviously you want something to be uh, called only on get and you want something to be called on only on post request so you can implement this closure in a way that you can check is by checking the request type you can see if it is a get then implement this or if it is a post then do this and anyways if even if you not check that 
automatically because the type that you're expecting if and you are doing something with it if if it is not what it is if you are expecting get and if it is post then your code will be run on nil things so nothing is going to happen and if it is expecting post and the post request came then obviously your code will run the main point is the difference is that we need to pass only a single closure to this basically i'm assigning this closure to this path internally the http router object will be registered will register this closure and it knows that it needs to be called whenever there is a request get or post request on this path and the request will be of type http request here which is the ios given uh, class http http request now if you remember we had some class functions there in kitura which were add http server then start or run and then stop here we have only two functions and that are instance functions on http server object so this which is like http server object is server server dot start or server dot stop start function will start listening for the incoming request so it will register also and start listening for the request it can take three parameters so it has port which by default is set to 8080 but you can mention if you want to set it to some other port and there's another parameter force ipv4 which is set to false and the third function is priority which is default set to dot background which is a correct thing to set because you don't want these kind of uh, blocking calls to be on your main thread so the priority is set as background run now this is all like i need to have any other functions the start and stop itself has everything but there is a difference if you remember in kitura we have start or run here we only have start so just like in kitura the start function starts listening and it's, it returns so if it is not being handled by by our own ways maybe some kind of blocking thing then it will return immediately so your server will stop listening for the new request but kitura also gave us some other one other function that is run we don't have that function in uh, swifter instead you can use a start in a way that you can yourself block this call so that whenever this returns immediately your function if you you have implemented this in a function your function should not return immediately otherwise you will lose this object there will be no incoming request will be served after that so i will explain you this more in detail when i'll give you a demo for this <laughs> Thank you.